little park bench under the shade of a sweet gum tree who leaves. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gents, what we're going to do is we're going to play some music in our background. I'm going to deal with some she aloe to this black. I made on a little park bench under the shade of a sweet gum tree who leaves. Aloe black, everybody. We're going to reduce that volume. This video is not going to be very long, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we need to talk for a second. Ladies and gentlemen, the first thing that people have been doing, everybody's been saying, well, the courts are coming after me for this. The courts are coming after me for that. All you have to do is look it up. Just type into Google, Redfield versus Fisher. So all you got to do is type that into Google and then type in chartered power chartered like chartering a bus chartered with a d power and go to that paragraph where it says that unlike the individual the corporation is an artificial entity owing its existence and chartered power to the state owing its existence and chartered power to the state so understand, all creatures of the state, whether they be corporations or officers of the state, remember, they take an oath of office with the secretary of state, which makes them a creature of the state because they were created by the state. Whether the state be Congress, whether the state be the executive branch, whether the state be the judicial branch, they are creatures, creatures creatures of the state, which means they are artificial entities. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I don't think people understand. We're going to let some waves be in our background. If you, you guys don't mind, let's uh, put the waves in the background. We're going to, I guess it don't want to be in the background because I did pause it earlier. Oh, well. Ladies and gentlemen, these creatures of the state, these artificial entities, need all of you to understand why they don't have any jurisdiction. This is a nation, supposedly, created by the people. This is a nation, supposedly, of the people. This is a nation, supposedly, for the people. The people are not artificial. The people are not man-made. The people are natural persons, living, breathing individuals. If the people are living, breathing individuals, then in order for government to exercise authority and go back and look at the Constitution, it gives government no authority to exercise authority over any living person. Just go back. I dare you to find a single amendment within the Bill of Rights which gives government the authority to exercise any jurisdiction over a living person. Now, if you harm another person, that's where the Fifth Amendment comes in. At. See, that's why government had its limitations. No amendment gave government the jurisdiction over a living person, which is why they created the 14th Amendment, so that they could create these artificial entities known as state, United States citizens. Now, state citizens, Ninth and Tenth Amendment recognized a state citizen. Why? Because the people under the Constitution for the states, which must conform to the Bill of Rights, said, no problem. I don't mind being a state citizen because with that state citizenship came secured rights, secured common law rights. So that wasn't a problem. That doesn't diminish their capacity. A lot of people are concerned about status. Stop worrying about status. Worry about your capacity. You want to come into the court as a natural person. So the first thing you say to a court, no matter what court you go into, your very first appearance in that court, don't be afraid to walk into that building. They open their mouth, say, excuse me. I challenge this court's jurisdiction over my natural person. The judge can say whatever he wants. Excuse me. I'm sorry. You can stop all that talking. That stuff don't mean nothing unless you're explaining where you gather jurisdiction over my natural person specifically over my natural person, then you don't have no authority. 
doesn't matter. You can say whatever you want because you're not sitting in a proper office and you're not in a proper capacity. Because the only way you get to converse with me is if you can prove to me that you have jurisdiction over my natural person because this is the first hearing and I'm challenging your jurisdiction as prescribed by your law. Just that simple. Study it, practice it, repeat it. Come up with a script. Police pull you over. Hey, sir, I'm challenging your jurisdiction over my natural person. No, no, I don't want to hear nothing else. Just show me where you get jurisdiction over my... No, that's a statute. That ain't got nothing to do with no natural people. Come on now. I said jurisdiction over my natural person. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then you need to get somebody out here. And by the way, you only get to have 25 minutes, so they better hurry up. Supreme Court says I can only give you about 25 minutes. And I'm going to start charging you for that time. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. I know this sounds confrontational, but you all must understand. I didn't make this up. I didn't create this. Hold on. Let's see. As we showed you in a previous video, further, pursuant to Rule 12.2b, B2, Virginia Rules, Civil Procedure, litigant must file a motion challenging personal jurisdiction from the onset of the case. Do that with the police. Police pull you over? Say, oh, I got to challenge your jurisdiction over my person. But you don't understand what I'm talking about. Oh, man, you guys are supposed to know this part of the law. Oh, yeah, 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 no, no, you're supposed to know the law. Ignorance of law is no excuse, so you don't have an excuse for not knowing the law. I just need you to show me where you have jurisdiction over my natural person. Just that simple. You guys don't have to argue with them. You can go on and do everything else after that, because once you challenge jurisdiction from the onset and they don't prove it, they cannot go any further. See, it says the court must take no further action in the case other than to dismiss it from the docket. They can't go any further, people. These are the rules. I'm not making this up. I'm showing this is 2010. This one right here is 2017. I'm not making this up. I'm not telling you something that is illegal or wrong. I'm telling you what the law says. To begin with, it is well established that objection to personal jurisdiction must be raised first, first, first. So do it when they pull you over. Do it at that first hearing. Do it first. Don't do anything else. Don't yell anything else. Don't shout anything else. Don't have any other conversation. Okay? And don't be like, unless you prove you have jurisdiction, don't do that. Uh-uh. Because the moment they say something else that ain't got nothing to do with jurisdiction, by your response, you've just proved that you don't have jurisdiction. So I need you to cease and desist. That's all you got to say. Even to the judge. They can say whatever they want at that point. Remember. Your job is long haul because then you will attack, attack, attack them through complaints against them for violating your secured right. Either it be the right to travel or the right to pursue happiness. You got the right to pursue happiness. Nobody ever said you're going to ever catch up to it, but you can pursue it for as long as you want. All right, just wanted to share this information with you guys in less than 10 minutes. Because some of you guys don't know this. Some of you guys are going to be afraid to say this. Ladies and gentlemen, challenge the stupid personal jurisdiction. Because the moment you don't challenge it, you waive that challenge. Personal jurisdiction, because it is not a motion to dismiss for lack of personal jurisdiction. You don't have to do a motion to dismiss. You have a motion to challenge jurisdiction. The law says that they must dismiss it because they have no jurisdiction. Jurisdiction is the authority to exercise authority in the first place. Hold on. Okay, we're going to do this real quick. It says, acknowledging this, we held that in order to object to the court's exercise of personal jurisdiction, it is no longer necessary to enter a special special appearance. When you do special appearance, any type of appearance means you submit it to the jurisdiction of the court. So stop doing special appearances, people. It is no longer necessary in the first place. Stating that with respect to challenges to service of process, that a special appearance to challenge personal jurisdiction is no longer necessary under the federal rules. A defendant must attack the validity of the service of process pursuant to this. On the other hand, the term general appearance still appears in some cases in the context of personal jurisdiction challenge, although precise definition of exactly what qualifies as a general appearance is not provided. General appearance is an appearance. It's still an appearance. As long as it's an appearance, it's an appearance. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, you have to challenge personal jurisdiction. 
Gotta go. Ten minutes.